Good day, YouTubers. How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Hopefully you're doing pretty good. Well, I'm changing out the transmission fluid on this 99 2.5 Chrysler Sebring. And uh, maybe some tips here, some pointers for you guys. Uh, I've got the pan off, and uh, we'll look at that. And look at the uh, transmission uh, fluid. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and pull this out now. It's done dripping. <laughs> Not too good. It almost looks like, oh, it's pretty dark. This is, is the original fluid that came in the vehicle. has 130,000 miles on it. You know, I didn't have to change it, but, you know, I figured, you know, I'm going to be selling the vehicle. And I didn't want someone pulling the dipstick out and seeing black because they don't understand, you know. Um, sometimes you don't have to change out the fluid if it's running fine, but I figured I'd take a chance to go ahead and change it out. And get down on my knees here and here is a look at the bottom of the transmission this is a uh, four speed with overdrive it runs great shifts great um, I got a new filter for it I got the filter for 15 bucks these bolts came out pretty easy they're all 10 millimeter bolts um, when you put them back in uh, you get a watch not over torque them you gotta start every bolt with your finger because these from what I've learned over the years, they're easy to cross thread if you get in a hurry. And if you have one that's cross threaded, the way this transmission sits in here with a pan, all the fluid will go back. And if you have a bolt that's cross threaded, not torqued down quite tight enough, it will start to leak eventually. So it's really imperative that you get all these bolts uh, torqued down there. And I've got a cloth on the ground. I'm, I spilled a little bit of fluid there in my yard. But, uh, there's a look at the bottom of it. Pretty easy to take off. I just had to take that little splash sealed off on the side there. And there's the oil filter hole. So let's go in here and look at the pan and the uh, transmission filter. Alright, here is the old filter. Uh, just for giggles, I tried to clean it out a little bit. I wanted to see how much debris and stuff was still in here. And you can see, you can't get all that out no matter how much you try to clean it out. For some 15 bucks, it's, you know, your best option is just go ahead and buy another one. Unless your transmission is already shot, you just want to put it back together and move it somewhere. So, uh, with the new filter I got, and by the way, this transmission here is a, uh, they, this is a A604 transmission. And when you buy the gasket kit, they tell you two things here. Either you use this gasket that comes with it, or if you don't use this gasket, you got to use at least a, use one quarter inch, uh, one quarter inch, one eighth inch bead of re RTV sealing all the way around because the way that transmission sits. It sits at an angle and all that fluid likes to sit in the back. And if you have a uh, place the uh, fluid isn't, um, well, if fluid's seeping out around that gasket, it's going to cause a nasty leak and you're going to always be putting fluid in. So just so you know and uh, so what I'm going to do I've, I've already cleaned all this up here I'm going to use this gasket I kind of like the old cork gaskets back in the day so on a warm day I'll just leave it sit here for a little bit or you can go ahead and start a bolt in on each corner of this and kind of start this with your fingers as you're putting it on the transmission and you can pretty much get all these bolts here uh, going in straight kind of like this and take your time at it and it should go in and you don't want to over torque these bolts because this will squeeze this gasket down and you'll have a leak eventually so I think it's only about 14 pounds it's very little not much of a torque you might want to look up your own torque specs because different transmissions here on these Chrysler's are a little bit different so we got our new uh, gasket there got a little o-ring and there's our new filter we're going to put on other than that, I'll put it back together. I took the magnet out. Just a little bit of black on it. No metal whatsoever in the pan. Uh, like I said, the transmission's just fine. So we're just one. I just wanted to clean it out a little bit. And uh, put it back together. And uh, that way when I go to sell it, I'll know in my mind that uh, I did all I did. Or all I could. For someone to have a nice running vehicle. So, go ahead and put all this in. Thought I'd make a video just to uh, give you guys some pointers if you're going to be changing one of these out on a Chrysler uh, Sebring, Sebring or anything close to that All right, so we'll set that off the side and just for the fun of it Here's the dipstick and here is the fluid and if you put this in and you see how dark that is Not much red or pink in there at all So this will make it look a little bit better when you go to check the fluid 
just knowing that somebody did try to take care of the transmission they did change out the fluid a little bit so but that is some pretty dark stuff there i'll see i see this a lot on older vehicles you know you get over 100,000 miles they don't change out the fluid it's typical you know the clutch packs and and seals inside start to degrade over time and that's what this black is a lot of times it's just very fine particle material but you don't want to see any metal in your oil that's for sure so uh yeah, she's just a little dark all right so let's go ahead and get this on all right so we got our little o-ring here and uh make sure you take the old o-ring out if it's still up in there sometimes you gotta wipe this out just a little bit i saw some dirt there all right so there we go and don't worry folks it'll never stop dripping it's just one of these transmissions that will continue dripping and we got that o-ring on there get on there a little bit better than that all right we'll put that up in here and there's a couple of holes right here you can see where that actually kind of goes in you'll know when it goes in right and uh there's that and there's that and there's that one now i'm probably going to set the camera down play around with that o-ring so it'll go up in there see, see it's not quite going up in there all the way so let me set the camera down all right there we go now it's seated in there and you can see if that o-ring is in our right just uh take a light and if you don't see if you see that o-ring you know you did something wrong but you can't see it it's up in there now and looks good so go ahead and put this oil pan on i'm gonna start these bolts by hand do one at a time and uh eventually get it on there and that should be about it shouldn't be too bad of a job if you want to do this so if you want to keep your car you know maintenance is always cheap if you can do it yourself anyway hey let me know where you're watching from right now all right so before we put this on there here is a quick tip you see how i got this gasket in here and i've got four bolts one two three four in here this gasket is uh pretty you know the holes aren't very big it'll actually hold these bolts in there see i can turn it upside down and now the gasket won't fall off and it keeps most of the holes pretty much right where you want them and this makes it a lot easier. And now I know some of you are saying, oh, put some silicone on it. Don't do it because you put silicone on this gasket, you go tighten this down, it'll squish it out, and this gasket will have a tendency to move. You don't want to do that. And try to keep it as clean as you can from oil, unlike I'm doing now. But, you know, it's, these jobs are a little messy sometimes. But other than that, now we can stick it on. And don't forget your magnet. Put it in there in the bottom. That's where that one came out. Because this does set at an angle like this, and all your fluid goes in the back, so... All right, so we have chitter chatter, I guess. I know. Put it on, Nathan. Get it in there and shut up. Okay, I will. Let's do it. All right, there's that one. There's that one. Like I said, the finger tight is what you want to start out. And you see that one started. Let me spin you around and around. And we got the one in the back here pretty much started there we go and now we'll go ahead and start with the start with the rest of them here put them in with your fingers and you can see i can still move this gasket around a little bit start them in so this is the part if you take your time at it you'll be really proud of yourself you won't have any leaks it'll be bone dry all right so let's go ahead and finish this up All right, so all of our bolts are in, fingered uh, tight, sort of, right now. Now, before I get too far, now, I should have filmed this earlier when I started working, but I didn't think anybody would really care about this video, but I thought, well, I might as well start somewhere. So um, before uh, I dropped this oil pan, I had to take a little screwdriver to get in here. These things are really on here tight from the factory. Sometimes you have to take a screwdriver and kind of take a little hammer and tap here, or sometimes you can just take a... I had a claw hammer here somewhere, if I can find it. Um, yeah, I know, you're cringing, claw hammer, whatever. Sometimes if you can just kind of grip the edge of this pan, like right about there, and just kind of pull in a little bit, it'll pop down. But don't take all your bolts out. Leave a couple in, because the way the angle is, this thing will just pour the fluid out. So, uh, there you go. So, now I'm going to torque all these down by hand. Do not use something like this torque these down by hand and I have a pretty good feel where they should be so if you want to look online and get your own torque specs go for it but uh, they're all in and uh, looks like we'll be done all right all right all right all right all right all right I wonder if that's trademarked 
Anyway, she's all on. All the bolts are pretty much torqued where I want them. I looked online and in my book and it said 16 pounds. I don't know. It could be true. Now, the key is when you're tightening these down, I have a good feel for it. And also, you see this gasket here? When that, thing start, that gasket starts to squish out just a little bit, stop. You don't want to go any farther than that because if you get too far, you'll damage that gasket. So do that all the way around and you'll be just fine. You see the gasket there? You can kind of see it. It's not squished way out or anything. And we got our back cleaned up there. And we don't have any leaks yet. Of course, I don't have any fluid in it, but we'll put some fluid in here in a minute. And uh, check for leaks. And we will be done. So let me know if this video helps you guys out on this transmission there. So, uh, all right, let's put some fluid in it. All right, guys, all the bolts are torqued. We got fluid in it. And we're going to go out and drive it, but I've been leaving it set, uh, well, I'll let it set for about an hour. And she looks good. I don't think we're going to have any problems. So we'll take it out for a ride and see how she shifts and wrap this video up. All right, guys, it's running great. Uh, no problems. Uh, so far, everything has been uh, okay. No leaks. Yeah, I notice it even shifts better now, um, probably because that filter was a little plugged up. It shifts from first, second, third, fourth. You can hardly feel it. So, uh, I guess we did great. All right, I don't see any leaks. Now remember, uh, when you put the fluid in, it's gonna look nice and red, but when you drive it a while, it's gonna mix up. It may, be, may not look as red, but it should look a little bit better. Yeah, it looks better. See, you got some redness there. So, uh, it's almost impossible to get all the fluid out. But it runs great, shifts great and everything, so I'm happy that I've got that taken care of. And get the hood down and we'll close this video up. So guys, thanks for watching. Until my next video, I'll see you later.